Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Pierre Mister. Pierre, welcome. Thank you. Uh, here to talk about physical review uh, letters. I know physical review letters has been around for a, a, a while now, right. hasn't it? Tell us a little bit about where it fits into the, the, the family of APS publications. So, so physical review letters is, is very unique in the sense that, uh, first of all, it's a letter journal, so, so the articles are quite short, right. and it's, uh, it covers all of physics. So in contrast to, let's say, physical review A or physical review B, which are more narrow in the scope, we cover all of physics, and, and we really want to make a point of that, that we don't follow any kind of fashionable topic of the day. We re all we want is the best papers. And we try to have extremely close communications with, with the community. It is a community journal. It, we own the journal. And uh, so we have a board of divisional associate editors, for instance, who are people who are working in the field, highly respected in the field, and also superb referees maintain high quality and this is how, how we try to really maintain the highest standards. How do you, uh, you know, it's, a, it's quite a competitive field, you say, to get the, 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 the best papers, to get the best research. How do you go about uh, ensuring that you do that? So, uh, we cannot rest on our reputation because nobody can ever do that. So what uh, we are enhancing since I became the lead editor is, is the direct contacts with the community. We really want to have a conversation, an ongoing conversation with the community. We want the editors to go not just to meetings like the March meeting, but also visit universities. We want them to have antennas in the field so that we know ahead of time where the great results are going to come. And then we really try to talk the authors of these greatest results into submitting the papers with us. That's really the way we do it, and I think the best way to do it is to know what's going on right. ahead of time. Right. right. When you get your crystal ball out and you right. uh, look to the future for, 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 for this very respected publication, what do you see? I, I think that uh, we will need to be careful about maintaining very strict standards because uh, the publication world is exploding and the signal-to-noise ratio is becoming more and more of an issue. There are so many papers right. and, and not you know, not every paper is great. So how do we maintain our position as, 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 as you know, as a hero, as, as a uh, flag waver for, for the highest quality? So that's one of the big issues we have, uh, so especially with Asia and other parts right. of the world, which are really becoming more and more, you know, significant in research. So we have to deal with that. Uh, an another thing we have to, to really keep our open eyes open for is, is the fact that the publication world is changing and everything is becoming electronic. Uh, for many years we had a limitation of four pages. What does a page mean anymore, right? The page on your iPad is not the same as a page on your big screen. Uh, how do we take advantage of all the extraordinary tools that we have now on the web, for instance? Could we have an image which become an active image in a, in a publication where you can go and change parameters and then do all kinds of things yourself? So there are all kinds of extraordinary opportunities that we have to explore and I hope take a leading role in, in, in developing and making uh, available to our, to our community because that's our job, right? right. To, to help communicate science and do it as well as we can. Well, thank you ever so much indeed for taking the time to talk to us yeah, today. It's my pleasure. Best of luck with the future. Thank you. Thank you.